All right, with uh, OS 4 and beta, um, I've been doing some updates on the library, so I wanted to put together a kind of a how to use uh, video. Um, so I'm not going to go super in depth on like editing styles here. This is more for everybody who's kind of jumping in now using the library. Um, it's it's a it's a lot different than my previous libraries. I've added a lot to it, uh, so I wanted to kind of go over uh, the basics. Um, so uh, first and foremost, uh, I do have uh, kind of all these different videos I'm putting in. So wherever you see these buttons on how to use, this will be getting updated, the introduction page, um, and then also what the default colors look like. Um, so uh, those will be there. Uh, the video kind of covering everything about OS 4 here. Um, so trying to put lots of info, uh, direct link to the current beta um, version. Um, so as this gets changed, I try to keep up with it. Um, but obviously, Frederick's uh, thread on TRA is the first uh, the first location you should go. Because um, obviously, if I didn't get a chance to update it when he updates, um, if you need the latest. But right now, as of this recording, it's uh, beta is uh, 4.1. Um, so you can get that. And then um, going in now. So I still have, uh, just like the older library, there is a filter um, for if you just want to jump around. Um, but what I've done is I've shrunk down so the, you can see all of the styles a lot easier. Um, so all of the style code is now going to be tucked up in here. Um, so, for example, this is just the, um, the fully responsive audio flicker, uh, what I call more canon approach. Um, you can go in to the style code. And then, um, as I've said in the past, I've added now eight default colors. All of these styles, unless otherwise noted, will have color change using new color wheel variation. So these are just your starting points. You can still use color change. Um, but um, in here, you'll get your uh, code for your main blade. Uh, you'll get code for uh, the cross guards, which would be blades two and three, uh, depending on how you set it up. And then also, I do have a crystal chamber. Um, one of the biggest changes improvements that i've made is going to be this customize and enhance now not every style in the library has this um, part of it is i haven't gotten around to it on some of them and part of it is some of the styles are actually really complex and trying to get them to fit the mold where i could let users pick and choose pieces of them was just getting to be too difficult um, so if you open up a style and it doesn't have the customize enhance button that means you're just going to get the style as is. Um, you can always edit them yourselves. Now, the editor currently does not have all the new features of OS 4. I know Frederick plans to update it, but it's not there yet. So, um, so if you do want to make edits to these styles, you'll have to do it um, by hand. Um, I do have plans to do a video on that, but um, I, I haven't had time. So, And since it's in beta, most of the people testing it out, I figure probably have at least enough of an understanding or just want to grab this stuff to play with it. Um, so I will eventually get to um, kind of how to do all the new styles by hand. Um, but in, I had done a poll like a week and a half ago and more people use the library for the styles than anything else. So that's where I'm starting. Um, but so find your default color you want. And right now the main blade and the cross guards will have the customized enhance. Crystal Chambers are another one of those tricky things, so they don't have it yet. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll get around to that for some time, um, but uh, you click on Customize Enhance. Now, this screen has changed quite a bit since the original build because I am just keep adding to it. Um, so basically, the, the idea behind this is um, there's just so many features in OS 4. There, there's always a lot of features, but now there's just so much more you can do with it. Um, that for me to go and build these styles all out um, and have all these variations, it, I mean, you're talking probably hundreds of thousands of possible combinations of effects now. Um, it, it made more sense to do it this way. So what you're doing is from the previous screen, you're picking the base. And then that'll have everything that doesn't need to be chosen in there. You can still edit it, but it doesn't need to be. And then here, all the new stuff I'm putting in. So Prion is a brand new thing. Um, uh, two things in the enhanced screens. Um, of course, you have your drop down so you can pick whatever you want, but some of this might not make sense to you. So I have these question marks. Just click it and it'll explain it to you. Um, and a lot of stuff will have default timing. So, like prions, all my prions are going to have an 8,000 millisecond um, 
default. Now, the prion effect, um, I'll just say it, it depends, and I have the note here, it will only show if you have a prion wave file in that font, and it will only show for as long as the prion wave file. Now, if you have a super short prion, uh, and these are defaulted to 8,000 milliseconds, what you will see is if you ignite your blade, you'll have that prion animation play, but say it's like a two second thing, which is like 2,000 milliseconds, you ignite your blade, you turn your blade right off, that 8,000 milliseconds has it passed, you'll actually see the end of the prion animation. Um, now, if you leave your blade ignited for more than 8,000 milliseconds, then you won't see it anymore. But obviously that could be a problem. So you're gonna go into the prion uh, effect and just change the timings. Um, so, and, and it, but the prion effects only visually show for as long as your prion sound wave plays. Um, but timing them out, because there's probably, people are going to be coming up with a lot of these, I'm sure timing it out will be important. Um, if you happen to have a prion that's longer than 8,000 milliseconds, obviously you'd want to extend that. Um, but that'll all right now have to be hand coded. Um, but at any rate, these are the prion effects. Now, certain effects I do have videos for. So if you see the little YouTube symbol, you can watch kind of the, these are my intro demo videos and I'll spare you from having to watch them again, but this just gives it. So if, you, if you're not sure about something, um, I've given you both a, a kind of a written description and then where I have specific videos on effects, I've also added these. Some of them won't have them. Um, as I build up more videos, I'll, I'll add here. Um, but so you can see kind of a general description of what's to be chosen and then you'll choose what you want. Um, if you want a prion effect, if you don't, etc. Um, and then to close these, because if you open them all up, it'll make the screen huge. You just click on them again, it'll close. So prion, I've got, and this list will keep growing. Um, that's part of the reason I'm doing this enhanced screen is so I can continuously add to it, um, you know, and just keep offering new stuff. Um, so there'll be uh, a lot of options here. I, I hope to double this list, uh, double most of the list where it makes sense over time. Uh, but, uh, you know, time gets uh, gets away from me sometimes. Um, so that's your prion effect. Ignition options, there's two ignition options. Uh, first is the type of extension. So standard extension is just that wipe, uh, so it's hilt to tip. Uh, there's a spark tip version. Um, there's cycle up. So cycle up, uh, I know the Tron discs are popular out there, and then also you have, um, but it's basically the Tron effect is what cycle up is because in the uh, it's actually color cycle that does that effect. Um, so... Uh, I call it cycle up here. Uh, responsive extension um, basically just means that the uh, speed of your extension is going to be based completely on the, ba uh, the the blade angle. And then dual mode just means there's a fast and a slow, again, based on blade angle. And just like before, if you click the question mark, it'll explain all this, all the defaults. Um, so the most of the extensions, the standards, are going to default to 300, millise uh, 300 milliseconds. And then the cycle up, I, I default out to 1,000. Um, because obviously that's a much bigger animation, so you need longer there. Um, but depending on your outwave, you can change these as well. Close that. And then power-up effects are part of ignition. And there's several options available. Um, so you can get your stable, unstable. There's two unstable versions for power-up. Um, one's uh, fire-based, one's hump flicker-based. So depending on your personal taste, you can pick those. And then the pilot light one, uh, this is based on the Ray uh, gold blade. So you'll get a little blue to green to blade color um, at the emitter. Um, so and I have that uh, built in. And again, just click the question mark if you're not sure what something means. I tried to describe it out for you. And then retraction options. Similarly, you have a, a standard retraction, spark tip retraction run up, um, which I describe as uh, basically just instead of the blade coming from the tip to the hilt, it just lets it release at the hilt and run up um, the blade to the tip. Uh, cycle down, which is the opposite Tron of uh, cycle up. And then just like uh, the responsive extensions, you got responsive retractions. Um, and then you've got your cool down effects. Um, for cool down, there's only one unstable, and that's partly because of how f the fire blade version works. So this one for cool down is always going to be a hump flicker. Um, the fire blade, if you first of all, if you have too many fire styles in your style, it'll slow everything down. But secondly, because fire has its own behavior where it releases from the bottom of the blade up automatically, it does not work well for cooldown effects. Uh, I've done it somewhat in the past, but I had to really uh, massage that style. Um, and again, for trying to build it this way, it didn't work. So yeah, if you use the uh, either of the unstable power-ups and you want a similar 
uh, cooldown. The, the unstable cooldown is slightly different than the fire version, but it looks close enough that uh, nobody's going to catch it. Um, so that's why there's only one there. And then blast effects. There's uh, several blast effects now, so I allow you to choose which one you want. Um, so regular blast has a kind of an impact point and a dispersion across the blade, but only for part of the blade. The blast wave goes across the whole blade, so it'll hit a spot uh, based on the angle of your blade and extend across the full length of the blade. And then the blast fade, it, it'll hit an impact spot and just fade on that spot. And then the two standard uh, blasts are in there as well. Um, so you can choose them if you don't want the responsive version. The standards just randomly appear. Um, and then you'll choose your clash. So there's only two clash versions right now. Um, and then uh, force boost is another new effect. I do have a video describing it. Basically what it does is when, or force boost, when you use your force effect now, um, there's actually an enhancement to your blade. These are all timed out to be a 30 second enhancement. Um, which I describe in the video, and there's a number of them, and again, this list will probably grow. Um, so like for speed boost, there's two versions, but if you use the force effect, you get 30 seconds where when you swing your blade, um, it's going to do the, the swing speed, um, either to a brighter color or to white, but to, depending on your choice. Force Aura um, just adds a, a kind of a brightness effect to the blade, and then Force Aura with speed boost adds both. And then Force Rage was a request um, and it turns your blade red to be as if you were uh, using the dark side. Um, that one, I have it in there for people to play with, but that's not the finished product. I haven't gotten back to playing with it. So that one, if you load it up and you don't like it, uh, that one's kind of an in-development one, but I stuck it in there. Um, so that one may change over time. Uh, and then the base flare emitter effects. I've got several of these. Um, so basically you get the emitter flare, which is just that bright spot at your emitter. You get a sparking emitter, which is kind of a flickering version. Uh, you get the responsive version, which will uh, change size as you turn your hilt. And then you'll get the uh, heat up, which is uh, kind of that uh, as if the metal of the emitter was heating up. So it'll start out with a red glow to an orange to a yellow to a white glow. And that will stay a white flare at the base. And again, descriptions here on everything. Uh, tip effects. I'm still playing with these. They're in there, but these are really placeholders, so I'm not going to talk about them too much. If you want to try them out, you can, but uh, I haven't really announced these because I'm I'm just kind of playing with them. So they're in there just as a placeholder for now. Uh, rain effects are pretty straightforward, but there's basically two right now. Rain spark is white. Rain dent is black. Um, and then the emitter cool off and the passive battery monitor, uh, because of how they work, it has to be one or the other. Um, so Emitter cool off is the opposite of the emitter heat up, where when you retract your blade, you're actually going to get a white to yellow to orange to red glow as that emitter cools down. Um, and then all the passive battery monitors, there's several versions um, that you can add. And those are just that visual indicator of a green to yellow to red um, based on your battery power. So if, whenever you have them active, they basically run for only a few seconds, and it's just to be a visual cue, the level of your battery. Um, so this way you can kind of, whenever you boot or change font or retract or all three, um, you can, uh, just get that little glow of your emitter. It'll be green when the battery's full, yellow when it's halfway, red when it's low, just tell you, Hey, maybe it's time to charge. And then you'll just click get style and that'll drop that style into your clipboard. Um, and then it's super easy. So if you haven't added styles to your config yet, uh, the manual is probably the best place to start. There's also a lot of videos out there. Uh, I'm going to breeze through it um, just quickly. So I'll open up my config file. So you can, so now I already did get style. It's technically already in my clipboard. If you have an existing preset that you want to add it to, uh, this would be one preset. So it starts with your opening bracket. That's your font name. That's the track. And then you've got the style PTR, which will begin here, ends with those two brackets. And then this is the close of the preset. Um, now, if you have more than one blade, uh, so this only has one blade here. If you have like a cross guard or you have something with accents or you have something with a crystal chain, but you have more blades, basically however many blades you have, you have to have that many styles in each preset. So if you have two blades defined up here, you have to have two styles in each preset. So between the brackets. But so I want to paste 
that style to an existing one. I'll just get rid of this style. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you have this opening bracket here and this closing bracket, and you need the comma if there's a style after it. And then you're just going to paste that style there. And that's that new style I just grabbed. Um, now, if you want to add a style, I'll show you that quickly as well. Um, so you would do your opening bracket, space, your font name. And this has to be exact to the font folder on your SD card. If you have a typo, if you don't capitalize it correctly, anything, you're going to get that font, font, font directory not found uh, warning. Your track. And tracks, you're going to say the location. Uh, so I put all mine in tracks, but if you have it in a font, you put the font folder name first. And then we'll just do, i just been using this guy for testing. And then a comma. And then I always put a line break, and then I close the bracket right away. The missing a bracket and missing a comma are like, in my experience, like 90% of the compile errors people get. Um, they... Uh, or they copy over it accidentally. So that happens where you, you might have put that bracket and comma in there, but then when you went to paste, you, know, you copied over it. So watch those brackets. So always have that open bracket, always have that closed bracket, always have that comma. And then right here is where I'm going to paste that style. Now I'm pasting it twice, but this is a demo. And that's all there is to it. Then you would just save this file. And then you go through your regular upload to the board. So uploading OS4 is not any different than any of the other uh, uploads, even the beta. It's the same exact steps, same exact process. Um, so all of that, again, is covered by the manual, or you can go watch all the different videos that are out there. Um, but that's all there is to it. So um, there is a ton in this library. Um, so, you know, have some fun with it. Take your time to, uh, you know, grab styles, try different things out. Um, I know once that editor is available, more people will be able to fine tune this stuff. Um, as I said earlier, I will do some videos on hand code changes, um, but I kind of have to plan it out because OS4 made a lot of changes to the overall syntax. Um, so I almost kind of have to go all the way back to the ground floor, uh, explain basics of the syntax and building up from there before I can even get to the level where uh, I kind of get into editing this stuff um, by hand. So it's, it's in the works. I'm, part of it is I have to think of how to approach it, and part of it is getting the time to do so. Um, but hopefully this helps you out. Um, you know, enjoy the styles. Um, if you guys, uh, if you run into any trouble, of course, hit me up. Um, I, at this point, I believe this the library should be like 99.9% .9 bug-free um, because I've pretty much run through everything, and a lot of other people have, but doesn't mean it's perfect. Um, and I am continuously making changes, so sometimes you make a little change and you break something. So if you if you do have a problem with a style, um, if you get a compile error and you've looked at all your commas and your brackets, um, you can let me know. Just tell send me the actual style giving you a hard time. Um, but uh, for the most part, most of what I've seen people having difficulty with is problems in the config, not the style. So. Um, so you can, you know, maybe take a few minutes to troubleshoot for yourself. If you get stuck, put it up on the open source. If there's no answer there, then hit me up. But uh, for the most part, a lot of it's that I'm seeing is missing commas, missing brackets. That's most of the, the compilers that people are getting. So enjoy.